All right, so we will start the class today and our focus is on blending formal and informal scientific and traditional knowledge. Uh, it is obvious that when we blend two systems of knowledge, there will be questions. Are our system or uh, please keep your mic off. Yeah, please keep your mic off. So it's very important that we recognize the tensions we have discussed in various sessions. So let me begin with identification of the tensions. So who would like to begin and tell me what are the tensions in blending uh, traditional and I will keep on writing them. I mean, why should, first of all, we be interested in this subject? As a scientist, you are expected to produce uh, latest scientific findings, research, which will help solve our problems. Uh, why should it be necessary for us to pay attention to traditional knowledge? And if so, uh, how do you think we can validate those claims? And what are the tensions that will arise if we were to validate? Our tensions can emerge from our peers, from our superiors, from our colleagues, from reviewers of our papers, a whole range of people. So who would like to uh, mention what are the possible tensions? And I'll keep on writing them so that we can write down these tensions. So let me share this screen and then I will. Uh, so what are the tensions? Let us begin to list them down. Anybody can start. What are the tensions while discussing the blending of modern scientific knowledge? with traditional technological knowledge. And then we will review literature from all around the world today and see what kind of tensions people have noted or if not noted and what kind of transactions have been going on in this regard. And is there a need for us to rethink this issue? So who would like to mention what are the tensions? Anybody? Communication gap. Okay. okay. Let me. Uh, so one is communication gap. Very true. I agree. Second is uh, traditional knowledge is considered backward. Very true. Many people think that. Third, uh, no, but belief system. But what are you trying to say? But what does it? What, why the tension emerges? Hesitation in accepting its validity. Okay, and. Uh, What when you when you say that there is an improper link, you have to explain to me. Okay, this is a very good point. The the lexicon used by both systems is quite different. The terms that we use are very different. What else? Lack of faith, of course, in each other, or lack of trust. Many scientists believe that what communities do is a mumbo jumbo, and uh, the communities may believe that the scientists don't understand. First half, maybe a second half. Please 
Nandita, please tell us what could be the sources of tension between when we try to blend the formal or let us say the modern scientific knowledge and uh, you are SRF and Malawi course work in Ikatamura. Please, Jenkins, you are. So I'm not sure TK is simple, but I'll write down TK is assumed to be simple, whereas we are supposed to do complicated science. Okay. If it's not, I don't. I mean, I'll put question mark here because there are some very complex solutions I will mention to you in a minute. What else? Uh, okay. I mean, we believe that uh, that modern science is superior, which may be true in many respects, but not in all respects. What else? What are the other tensions? Tensions in making this relationship become stronger. Novelty, okay. This is an interesting point. Let me see. Uh, okay, TK is believed to be superstitious. Sometimes you believe that uh, uh, much work may have already been done, which is well, which, which, is, which is possible about any science actually. So, uh, lack of novelty. What else? That's right, knowledge is verbal, oral, and therefore, uh, yes, that's a, that's a point. Much of TK is oral. That uh, makes it uh, difficult sometimes. But, you know, and Marie, what we're saying is that our purpose is to find scientific validity. So it is true that at the moment it may not exist. We're trying to understand what are the tensions while trying to believe, trying to arrive at a scientific validity. So when we want to, sub, let us you submit a proposal. What are the likely questions you are likely to fa you will face? Or what are the tensions that will arise in your mind or mind of reviewers or mind of the director, mind of the funding agency? So, Devinder, I'm not able to understand your question. Dilemma and success of the hypothesis. Uh, which kind of hypothesis? I don't understand this point. What are you trying to say? Ethical is very important. Very important. Very important. This is one of the very major sources of tension. And I will focus a lot of attention to that today. This is very important. Uh, TK is at an early stage of uh, early stage of scientific claim. So a long way, a long value chain uh, might arrive. Okay. Anything else? Let us see. Public use. Prachi, that is a problem about any scientific research. Why only this? 
any scientific research, I mean, unless it is of some value, uh, would serve sort of limited purpose, except in basic science, where you expand the horizon of thinking. Uh, I'm trying to see if I missed anything. Anything else? People, person, Tiki might just want to keep themselves. So yes, this is an important point. Many communities want to keep their knowledge secret. Yes, that's true. That is true. That is certainly true. What else? Now let us look at some tensions in terms of our own conduct, conduct of the scientists. What could be the tensions in our own conduct? Uh, yes, yes, I agree. Some PK maybe. It's very true. I have no doubt about it. Right? But Vaishnavi, that is our purpose. We want to find science behind functional TK. Maybe I should have used the word functional here with functional. So we were not getting into the belief system. We are talking about the things which work. Mm. So, and some of the things some of the methods by traditional communities involve modern material. For example, we were in Jammu Kashmir once, and in apple tree, there is a stem borer which affects the productivity. So we were talking to a farmer, how do you control the stem borer? He said, sir, we put little petrol in the hole and seal it with data or something, and then, the vapors of the petrol will kill the insect wherever it is. Now that was a very creative use of a modern material for killing the pest where otherwise any other chemical would not have reached. And you don't have to drench the plant in the pesticide. So you are using very small quantity of petrol in the hole and by the evaporation, it would become vapor and then reach the point where the insect is and kill it. That seemed to be sensible. Some other people did in coconut, the stem borer, they were uh, not a stem borer, this uh, rhinoceros beetle, which makes a hole in the trunk. They will put little jaggery, ants will come to eat the jaggery and go inside the hole and try to kill the rhinoceros beetle. Now that was a very interesting ecosystem based traditional knowledge. So uh, let's look at what are the other tensions which have been mentioned. Uh, not encouraged, okay, awareness, okay. Uh, how, yes, I think these are some relevant points. Let me add these. Mm. Okay, so uh, awareness is lacking, that is one problem, and we have to solve this problem. You also mentioned about the uh, what was the other point? That is okay. Whatever is superstition, we are not getting into that. We will only look at the knowledge which is functionally effective. Now, we don't know the science behind it. That's fair. But uh, we will not get into superstitions because those are uh, beliefs for which there may not be any validity in terms of functionality. Uh, okay, the publication. Well, there are even PNAS has published papers on traditional knowledge, science has published papers on such knowledge, National Health Institute, 
journals have published. I will show you those journals. So, but I will mention this publication hesitancy. Okay, that could be one reason for one tension. Uh, okay, what else? Yes, modern science can be limited. We will discuss that. We will discuss that to the example. I mean, uh, some of you who are students of material science try to think of a protein that will be as uh, strong and flexible as the spider web, spider's thread or spider's silk is. I mean, till date, we have not been able to produce a material. And I will show you some publication on that. Uh, where they have tried to look at both the thread made from the cocoon and thread made from the gland secretion and try to understand how, I mean, uh, modern science has no explanation when 30% weightage percentage in the water, I mean, that much of the, if you look at the density of the fiber, how can a protein not precipitate with that kind of characteristic that silk protein has? So there are, there are sometimes uh, examples where modern science is not able to reach the complexity that people have foreseen. So while spider is clever, but how did people believe it's, how did people discover its properties for wound healing and other things? So language, yes. Okay, we have captured a lot of reason uh, yes, I think that's also true. We are we have less interest in lack of interest in natural materials, and uh, uh, lack of curiosity or interest of young people. That of course is that could be true, and there could be other tensions of attribution how to, who to acknowledge and so on. I'll show you the papers of both kinds, papers where traditional knowledge has been published after research without any attribution to the, without any co-authorship with the traditional communities or their knowledge providers and the ones where they have been. So, uh, no, I will not go anything as far as that because I don't want to pass any judgment about the modern science. Modern science has provided a lot of solutions to us and we need to be really appreciative of that and you're all students of modern science so i won't say that it is by definition uh, anything immoral but yes there are transgressions that take place in both the systems okay so let me let me save this file and uh, uh, all right let us let us let us uh let's go back and ask ourselves this question that funding yes funding could be a reason we will try to resolve that issue but that could be reason so first of all let me explain that why are we trying to blend let me share the presentation and uh, so uh, why are we trying to blend? Our reason for discussing this subject is that there is a there is a merit in the way communities solve problems. Sometimes at very low cost. Sometimes in a very uh, with a very simple step. And at times they discover properties which would take a long time for us to discover. After there are tens of thousands of species and if we were to screen each one of them, it would take a long time. I had given example, National Cancer Institute when it screened 35,000 plant species for cancer. Texas Bacata was one of the few five or six which were found to be effective. And in Dehradun and other the regions of that 
altitude. I mean, this tree later on disappeared almost because of the excessive harvest. That's a different matter, but an very unfortunate development. But that apart, the fact remains that in the conventional system, if you go by screening of species possible, uh, maybe our protocol is not correct for screening. That could also be a reason. So let us look at an, a, a case example. And through that case, we will see some ways in which we have been able to take this issue forward. And uh, that's right, sometimes the projects have to be long-term. So Sonu Hembram was a scout who documented the traditional knowledge of late Sri Shatugan Prasad Vedya, Jharkhand, 2007-8. When the prior research was done by the team in NIF, they found that the claim was new. Patent was filed with the help of our dear friend Tom Turano, who was at that time PhD, and later on that company was taken over by KLNG, KLN Gates, Bill Gates' father's company. And Tom Turano did not charge any pesa to us. The patent was filed without any cost because he respected the work that we were doing. And we had corresponded and met several times. So he had offered us help. Right from 2003 onwards, he had been uh, 2000 onwards, he had been filing patents for us without, without any cost in the US. And many of us got it. Interestingly enough, TKDL opposed the claim in USPTO for this claim of typhoid. And we withstood our claim because TKDL's objection was based on a very cursory knowledge. It was not specific enough for typhoid. So then what happened next? A patent was filed, as I said just now, and this is the patent number. And this patent was filed, and you must appreciate this, in 2010, and it was granted in 2013. And of course, to camouflage the main plant, we had mentioned many species which could also, which were belonging to a similar group of plants that could be uh, used for controlling the bacterial infections. And uh, patent was granted. When patent was granted, simultaneously we started research in ICMR unit, ICMR's virology unit in Kolkata. Deprasha Chattopadhyay was there at the time and his other colleagues. Uh, and Shatrugan Prasad Vedya, the innovator, was one of the co-authors. Shantar Dutta was at that time director, I think. So this paper was published in Biomedicine and Pharmacotherapy, 2018. Uh, mind you, the plant extract in this case was found effective against multi-drug resistant salmonella type. So it was a case where the traditional knowledge was better than the modern science, not inferior, not less effective, not just also useful, but more effective because you know about AMR, antimicrobial resistance problem in the many diseases and in the cyphoid, this no different. The, the strains collected from the patients which were found to be resistant to the various antibiotics available was screened against this extract and it was found that even those could be controlled. So here is a case I'm taking where the, the knowledge obtained by a traditional knowledge holder was superior to anything and everything known at that time in modern science. So what did he do? He developed models. Some of you coming from biological science would know it better. Uh, the, the typhoid is treated with drugs like ampicillin, chromphenicol, am amoxicillin, ciprofloxin, etc., etc. And they took the extract and developed both toxicity trials and also in vitro trials to see whether the symptoms or at least the organisms can be controlled. And they found a great degree of effectiveness. So look at this. We scout the knowledge, 
we formulate, we file a patent in India and US, because if this drug goes around the world, we might be able to make it, and make the claim, or at least the company in US might like to license it for global market. We do the blending of research is done, knowledge is used, and the knowledge holder is one of the co-authors. In the patent, mind you, the patent is only in his name and his son's name, as you can see here. So uh, there is no scientific, no scientist of NIF or Honeybee Network, or for that matter, of the ICMR lab, is owner of the intellectual property. So intellectual property is owned, wholly owned by the healer. He's no more now, late Shri Shatugan Prasad Vedyaji, and his son. But the pub, in the publication, we said you can share, no problem. Because after all, scientists also need recognition for their work. So this is the model that I'm trying to share. I will, I will like this to be the benchmark in the mind you should keep when you compare other cases. So there's another case where Dr. Kondo of National Center for Cell Science looked at some of the plant extracts for cancer, against skin cancer, and found their effect on the control of the cancers. And he found that uh, the migration of the melanoma cancer cells using bone assay. Uh, it, the migration of the cell was reduced due to treatment with herbal extract. So very advanced science was used. Very, the, some of the best models were available that were used by Dr. Kondo. Yes, any question? So if there's a question, please uh, do stop me. Uh, there is no problem. You can stop me anytime. But if some of you know this model better, you might be able to evaluate its worth. But to my mind, and as I learned from Dr. Kundu, I think I took it. From Dr. Kundu, able for studying the in vitro trials. Now, what are we trying to say in this case? The blending has been done with the models. And now we come to the spider case. And just now Dr. Nanika shared with me a paper which I will uh, bring to your notice in a minute. So what did, what did we find? We found that uh, the community of whitewashing people use the fiber for, use the cobwebs for, as a, the protein as a blood coagulant. I had mentioned that before. And uh, we had a uh, spider cell line was prepared and the cell line showed that uh, uh, it was effective. And then it was very interesting. A paper was published in Science. Now, some of you were hesitant. How can research being done on traditional knowledge or materials be published in top journals? Now, science, you all know, is one of the top journals. And what was the problem they were finding? They were finding a problem that they, they were not able to replicate, they were not able to understand how can protein not precipitate using uh, water released with the protein and used in making the fiber. They looked at both the processes, how the insect spins it and how the insect releases it. And they studied, this is the paper I would recommend those of you who are in material science and want to understand how natural materials can have properties. A combination of high strength and extensibility is a characteristic unavailable to date in synthetic materials. Please understand. The scientists are saying, admitting that the properties that silk uh, the spider's web silk has is not available in any modern material. Another example where modern science can benefit, benefit from natural materials, but also benefit from the knowledge that people have of how spider's web webs are formed and behave and, people and the uses that people have. So this is another example where we could come across 
they are sort of talking about medical devices might use these materials made by five, if you could synthesize this. Now I'll come to third point, which mm -hmm. briefly I had mentioned earlier, but today we will go into greater detail. And we will look at only one aspect of it, which is uh, practice in Andhra Pradesh, Godavari district, documented by Dr. Chari and his colleague uh, from Raja Mundri, Medical Research Center. He was working at the time there many years ago, 92. We had published an article in Honeybee Newsletter. I should, I would send you, uh, our Dr. Manamika would send you the some of the old issues of Honeybee so that you can all see what we do in this magazine. So we will send you a 25 years special issue. Now, this was a practice. So what did we notice? We noticed that United States of America recommends officially the use of milk for plant disease, viral, virology, uh, viral, in the, on the site virologyj.com. We published in 92-93 in our newsletter uh, uh, about the use of milk for viral control. The economist wrote in 2013 that uh, one of the proteins in milk, mother's milk, protect infants against HIV infection, October 26, 2013. The link is given here. So for plants and for humans. Uh, let's look at some more research. So 1934 was the first paper on inactivation of viruses by milk. 1941 in greenhouse tomatoes and so on. 1951, 1962. And the study by Dr. Chari and Nagarajan, Raskodavri, where they found that farmers were using it for a long time immemorial. Now, I wish, and you will see next, we have a paper where they show how wheat, whey proteins can be used. Of course, none of this Acknowledges the community. That's a different matter. But let us look at the scientific matter. Uh, in Canada, in Michigan, they mentioned about in 2014. In uh, Canada, Ontario website, Agriculture Department, they again recommended in 2005 milk as a management tool for viral diseases, and uh, they mentioned that this has been found to be effective in different crops. And there was a paper published. At our suggestion, research was done. We sponsored it in Kazari, Jaipur, and they found that it was useful for certain poultry mildew and some other fungal diseases also. Now, before I go further, let me stop here and ask you. Uh, among those of you who had a view skeptical about the potential, do you see that there is a potential now? Do you, before I proceed further, uh, do you see that there's a potential in this in this blending process? I've given you, of course, some of the outstanding examples where uh, the traditional knowledge is proving to be better than anything available in modern science. You know that we don't have any modern solution for viral control. There's no, no medicine, no, no pesticide. And here is a solution, very simple, low cost, simple, but with good science. With good science. And there's a postdoc in Australia who did work. I had, a, I had once reviewed a lot of literature on milk as viral control. And around the world, good research is going on. Not so much in our country, unfortunately. Uh, apart from Kazari study, I don't know of many studies in our country, for whatever reason. And the purpose of talking to you today all is that, well, I don't know, but uh, milk and turmeric are being used. I use it. I use it daily in the morning. Uh, I assume that it helps even against COVID. But one could explore it better. One could explore it more, and then understand. The point that one is trying to say is that uh, no, Kaushal, that is not true. The Ayurveda has only knowledge about, let's say, 1,400 plant, more or less. They mention many more, but 1,400 are the ones which are used in most medicine. They have 43,000 species of plants. So naturally, the folkloric knowledge is far, far richer than what is given in Ayurvedic text or Siddha or Yunani text. So please 
don't be under the impression because TKDL deals with only codified text. And the knowledge that people have are about species that may not have been codified so far in the last 5,000 years. Because that is the evidence. People have done studies to find out how many plants are claimed in Ayurveda or Siddha or Junani. So please understand, the whole lot of knowledge remains to be understood and documented, not just about plant, but all kind, also kind about various materials. We just now took the case of silk, but there are other materials, low carbon steel, for example, and many other materials of this kind, which require a specific kind of furnace in Chhattisgarh and parts of Jharkhand, where tribal people make arrowheads. After we all know about Ashoki Lat near Kutuminar, which has not been rusted for 2000 years. And we still have not discovered what could be the what could be the chemistry and physics of that process in which that material was synthesized or was fabricated or forged 2000 years ago, exposed to the nature. So please appreciate that there could be examples uh, where traditional knowledge could advance the frontiers of science. And this is where my interest lies. I would like, we, were, we are trying in this course to draw your attention to these trends that exist in people's knowledge. There are weaknesses we don't deny. There are myths we don't deny. There are superstitions we don't deny. Those problems are there. But mind you, superstitions are there among scientists too. When Tarapur nuclear project was made critical, uh, those of you who work in radiation research might know or might have seen the television news that day or, or later on. They had made, it made a swastik sign on the, in, on the reactor, praying to God for keeping it safe. Now, what is that? That is superstition. When Chandrayaan was being launched, uh, our head of the space program and our, our prime minister was sitting there in his row. And after a few minutes, after 15 minutes, 20 minutes, he will go out and come back. Now, when Prime Minister is sitting, security wouldn't allow people to go in and out like that. But he was the boss, so he was allowed. And later on, somebody asked, what was he doing? He was going out for prayer. Here, prayers. In a scientific mission? Yes, because that was his belief system. Uh, there are scientists who do Ganesh Puja and other Pujas and all that. So please understand that uh, having beliefs in certain cultural uh, norms is not contradictory to pursuit of science. You can pursue high quality rational science and still have quote unquote irrational beliefs. And that's fine. That happens in life. I would take that as our imperfection. But uh, the point remains that the potential of traditional knowledge. And this is a good point, Ashni, that you mentioned that in China, they have gone far ahead. First of all, the TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, one in five US citizens have used TCM. How many have used Ayurvedic medicine? Fraction, no comparison. And second, on, in many hospitals, on the same floor, you will find on one side TCM, they use the word patented Chinese medicine, uh, treatment opportunity, and another side allopathic medicine. And a person can combine the two. I've been to such hospitals in Beijing and many other places. So they allow the individual patient to decide they want to get acupuncture or acupressure. And they also want to take medicines, by all means do it, if you want to. Scientists don't oppose it. Because some people get benefit from those therapies, so that's fine, they allow that. So what I'm trying to say that uh, there's no, comp yes, you are right about steel, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, is it live on YouTube? Uh, Mega, have you switched, have you uh, switched on the YouTube link? Uh, sir, there is sir, uh, some technical problem coming in. So I tried on Facebook also and YouTube, but it's not working. Not working. Why? Uh, 
means it's showing that uh, the account permission is uh, disabled so i have to check uh, once the meeting is over i have to check with the uh, zoom account first settings okay we will upload the video on youtube then yes. is that mega can we do that yes sir we can so sangeeta i'm sorry there is a problem but uh, that uh the youtube link today is for some technical reason is not working but we will be able to upload the video after an hour of the class uh today itself tonight itself so you would have the access to video if you are not able to listen to the conversation now sorry about that so let's go further A any other question please any other comment or question uh anybody else has any question I have i have the been able to shape shift your beliefs or your preferences little bit to the words the knowledge system of people have been honestly if not says that no sir we have, our beliefs have not modified we still believe that there is not much logic in working towards the traditional knowledge system as i said i we took some of the strongest examples because we wanted to obviously begin with uh areas where we are stronger where where the knowledge system of the people is stronger and there are many other examples that uh, will come to now okay let us see before we will have break uh, let's go further and see some more examples let us go further and uh, so we were, we had looked at the milk and then we will see next so this is a paper where a plant in amazon forest let me make it full screen so a plant in amazon forest sikka was used for validation this plant is from a kichwa community in ecuador but that community has not been made or any elder of the community has not been made co-author in this case this in paper not too old 2018 and they have identified uh, biologically active indol alkaloids and many other compounds and they believe that this will empower communities they it will also increase the respect for the scientific basis of their knowledge and may also help in conservation and so on and so forth it is a painkiller stimulant and antiseptic now we all know that uh, this is an area where large number of people suffer muscular pain and other pain all of us including myself have pain in uh, my legs and some of the muscles and it uh, it is not easy to find any treatment in modern science so we suffer continuously suffer and we live with it that's kind of reality that we have now if there are solutions available for that certainly it is very welcome but as you will see here there is just an acknowledgement but no authorship no authorship it is found in many parts brazil and amazon colombia ecuador guinea peru venezuela so it's widespread obviously the knowledge of this plant will be widely by shared by uh by various communities so let's 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 go further and see uh yeah so this is the plant and various compound that have been identified some of these may be possible for synthesis in which case you will not draw upon the biodiversity and you will be able to you synthetic compound but there are some scientists who believe that the same compound when synthesized may not always behave the way natural compound so maybe there is some element of stereochemistry which is involved or there are some other dimensions of uh the way molecule is uh bound or is uh, uh the stereotypically stereochemically uh, organized that may change 
the, the natural, when you synthesize it, may not be the same way as it is in natural form, although the molecular structure is same. There could be some reasons, I do not know. Some of you will have to figure out. In which case, it will be useful then to conserve the species and grow it fast, grow it widely. They did a lot of other knowledge, documented all of knowledge. Again, it's only the community's name broadly, the tribe is mentioned, no reference to the community leader, no reference to the healer. And this is the way business has been done. This is the way last 100 years or more knowledge extraction is going on. Formal scientists have been documenting and dealing with this knowledge for various commercial and other products. Never anything goes back to them, nor are they acknowledged as author of knowledge. So one of the tension point, as many of you, one of you mentioned about ethical issue, this is a very serious ethical issue. And uh, we need to really, uh, we need to really tackle this. In fact, we would not lose anything. Let's say there are five authors and one of them is a elder of the community or healer. How would your paper become less valuable? Do you think paper would lose any value if you put them, make them as co-author? Uh, Aisha, this is a point I really don't, and you have to explain to me. Like, can you explain to me mixture? You know, but we were talking about a molecule, whether the molecule when extracted from natural compound, natural source, and when synthesized could behave differently. If you have some insight on that, I'll be happy to, if you can mention that. What are the possible reasons? Why would the same compound extracted from natural source and synthesized in the lab behave somewhat different in some cases, not always, but some cases. So I have no clue. I mean, this is not subject that I have studied enough to be able to comment on it, but I'm sure some of you know much more than I do and will be able to throw light on it. And I will suggest that some of you may tell us in the next session, if possible, uh, how this can be the reason. Now let's look at, yes, we can, we can, um, Isolate. Now look at the acknowledgement of this paper. In acknowledgement, they mention we are grateful to the member of Kichwa community, so and so people's assembly, collaborating families, they're valuable. They are just put in a footnote. People who are the author of the knowledge are put in the footnote. And who is the author now? The one who chronicled it, who documented it. That doesn't seem to be very fair. That doesn't seem to be very fair. We need to look at our day. Here in the paper. Karaluma uh, Lesyantha for scientific validation of Indian traditional knowledge uh, for various kinds of uh, gram positive and gram negative bacteria. And they found that the extract had higher inhibition against gram positive than gram negative. And there is a good research done because they have, she has been able to explain why. Uh, the cell wall of the gram negative bacteria is different and permeability of that cell wall requires different kinds of biochemical reactions versus the gram positive. So there's a good science in it. I appreciate that. But no reference to the scholars as author. Mm -hmm. So science is growing, science is progressing, but people are not progressing along with. So which means that the bridge between the two knowledge system of knowledge is not symmetrical, is not reciprocal, is not very fair. Yeah, bond angles, that Sayyad uh, could be the point, yes, and epigenetic conditions, rationally. And these are the questions on which I would like you to do some research and review of literature so that, you know, scientists begin to understand that there is something in nature which we still have to figure out when we do synthetic chemistry. And of course, synthetic chemistry has delivered lots of compounds and lots of solutions, a lot of polymers and a lot of paints and whatnot. I mean, the material science is full of new synthesized materials. So I have a great respect for material scientists and for the matter all scientists who are developing new solutions. But nothing would be lost if we were to work together. And best science should be used. I, I mean, I was very happy when uh, Sirisha has given explanation as to why these compounds are effective against gram positive and not gram negative. And then I read all of that and I found that it's very interesting that their cell wall uh, 
He has quantified the reason why it is so. And then, of course, then she has also found the relationship why these extracts work, what compounds are there in this comp plant, which compounds have been found valid for which kind of organism. I mean, it is a reasonably good study, no doubt. But my regret that the people who give this lead to the author, authors who are not made co authors. Uh, this is another example from Bangladesh. For schizophrenia, they have found some plants. Schizophrenia is a very serious problem, as you know. There are not too many good medicines, and a lot of young people suffer, young and old people suffer from this. I personally know of uh, family members who have had this problem. So we are always looking for good solutions. And if communities have that, what is the harm if we can make them co authors and involve them? Uh, they have lo looked at the results of. Uh, compounds from different parts of the same plant. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, and they have seen that different communities are using different parts. So there's a variety of knowledge system which people are trying to use. Uh, so it's interesting that the dialogue on the synthetic chemistry is continuing on the chat, that's very nice. Another paper on Keraluma Mela. Now, please, uh, after the, after we give a break, I would like you to look at some examples of traditional knowledge from your discipline. So if some of you are in material science, some of you are in uh, electromagnetic, so if you have an, understood the conductivity properties of some of the traditional materials, alloys, you know, we all know about Ashtadhatu and many other things that were used. So if there are some, if some of you would give examples after we will have a break in a few minutes, I will take some more examples. I would like you to take some time off, maybe 15 minutes to each one of you do research on finding out some examples in literature from your discipline, from your domain, and then share with us so that we internalize the logic. And if we discover that in our country, we have neglected this field of knowledge where well, other countries or other societies are paying a lot of attention. And perhaps we need to figure out. Now, this example of IICT Hyderabad, where they have found a new pregnant steroid from this strength of this. And very good studies they have done. I mean, you can look at the paper and you will find they've given the molecular structure, they've done all kinds of research. This paper again. No reference to the healers uh, by name, no acknowledgement. Uh, I mean, acknowledgement is their general acknowledgement, but no name in authorship. And very unfortunate. Uh, this is from Australia. Very interesting paper. Uh, how the tradition communities use water, and the modern scientists have tried to find the science underlying that. For managing the ecosystem. Again, no authorship. No authorship. Now, this is a very interesting paper. Again, from Pakistan for diabetes, same tradition, whether it is Australia, Pakistan, Peru, Mexico. India, doesn't matter which country it is. The violations of, we are thankful to the university so and so for supporting the research and the community somewhere, that's it. Now, this is a paper on uh, the plant which are used to catch fish, some kind of poisonous plant. Very good research has been done. They're talking about integrating the knowledge system but wouldn't make them co-authors. Valid knowledge, good science. And uh, they're asked this question, is it respectful? But then they have something interesting here. They are at least acknowledging that it does open some directions which modern science did not have. And they believe that they could perhaps learn much deeper insight 
from the Dutch knowledge that they would have brought together. Now, this is a paper from NIF, where the first author, there are colleagues from Sushti, colleagues from NIF, and the first author is the knowledge holder, Khomaji Badaji Katabia. It is for tech. Now, we tried that this should become the norm where the knowledge provider from a local community becomes the first author. If for some reason you don't want, at least they are co-author because it wouldn't matter to them whether they are first or author. But in this case, I was happy that they agreed that the entire team, including the research staff who worked on them, all of them who worked on the experiment, and they showed that for controlling tick, this solution was very effective. One farmer authored the knowledge that made a solution very affordable and accessible, and it can be used as DIY solution. Very effective. Uh, I'll give one more example. Again, here you have the first author, a uh, different paper, but first author is the community member, farmer, whose knowledge was used for mastery herb, for mastitis. And uh, I would wish this become the norm. That's my wish. So uh, let me see. We will stop here before I go further. And we will have a break for five minutes. When we go for break, kindly reflect for a few minutes on what we have seen today. The blending is taking place. So what I'm saying is that my complaint is not that there is no blending taking place. Blending is taking place all around the world, in Europe, in US, in Australia, India, Japan. We have papers from all over the world. What is not happening enough is the shared ownership of knowledge, shared authorship. And what is not happening also is that very seldom are the findings shared with the people in local language. To enrich, to empower, to increase their confidence in their knowledge system. So in a village, you have a meeting and you explain to them, to look, this knowledge we got from a village, so and so had provided us this lead. We did research, and you may not understand the chemistry of what we did or the physics of it, but we want to tell you that when we compared it with the best of the medicines in the market, we found this to be more effective. Now, if you tell this to people, if it is indeed so, you are going to be completely truthful to scientific finding, as in that case of typhoid. The claim was better then the control was even for the antibiotic microbial resistance. I mean, those strains of typhi, organism, bacteria, which was, which was resistant to all known antibiotics. Wouldn't that be nice to the community to hear this? Wouldn't that encourage the young people in their community to then pay more respect to the elders and their knowledge system? Today, young people are not interested neither in the labs nor in the villages. So my job, and both of us are trying in this course to bring this respect for the sake of good science, affordable science, affordable excellence, as Dr. Michelle Kalafan calls it, uh, affordable, accessible, and available knowledge, knowledge which is available to people at low cost, but with the best scientific backup and with good publications for the authors. I've shown you this journal of science. There was an interesting paper which we published, republished in Honeybee with the permission of the author, which was published in PNAS. And what was it about? They found 3,000 year old vessels during the archaeological finding in Egypt, where in which the wine was stored. So they scraped the residues that were there in the vessel and tried to find out the compounds in the residues. Then this went back into the chemistry and tried to find out which plants had those compounds. Then they went back and found out which of these plants grew in this region. 
from the historical records. And they were able to then uh, able to hypothesize very well about the plant extract which was used by people 3000 years ago in making herbal wines. And their effect, of course, that then went into PNAS. This paper was published. After the break, I'll give you the reference. So what I'm trying to say is that top journals, good science will be published in good journal, no doubt about it. And good science can be triggered by a question in the question that you or your colleagues or your advisors may raise, or a question that a community may raise, or a community leader, healer may raise, or a community member may raise. Uh, it's a issue of who raises good questions. And can that question trigger my curiosity to pursue that research in a manner that excites me? So I will, we'll have a break. We'll come back at 6.37 or 6.38. Um, please have fitness break, get up, do some exercise, and we'll meet at 6.38. मुझे तो कोई आवाज ही नहीं आ रही कि क्या बोल रहे हैं। ये ब्रेक, ये ब्रेक, ये ब्रेक, ये सिक्सटी एट।
that also maybe makes us realize that probably you had missed some part of the class yeah that's what i said All right, friend. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, the question uh, by Sachin, I will answer that question first. Uh, it's very interesting that uh, legally, technically speaking, you cannot file a patent on what is a prior art. That means which is already published in any text available in any public library or otherwise. However, if you find some novel property which is not published, novel process which is not published, or a product by a new process, new product by a new process, or new product by an old process, that can be patented. So the black pepper, as improves the bioavailability of nutrient, was known. But when NBRI, sorry, CDRI did research on how piperin might improve the bioavailability of many of the modern drugs also if mixed together. That was a new finding. That it can increase the availability, bioavailability of various compounds in the body. That was a new finding and I think they had a publication, they had a patent also on that. I will check just now. So, uh, just check on piperin. Piperin uh, CDRI. There is a patent they have, I, I remember that. Some of you from CDRI might know it. So that is an example where a patent was granted on finding a, a new explanation which was not mentioned in traditional knowledge. So it is possible. It is possible. Not only incurable disease, even curable disease, if there's a new knowledge, that can be. Uh, my voice is not logical. Are you not able to hear my voice? Yes, Anjali sir. Is not able to. Huh? Yes. We can hear you. We can hear, we can Anjali, hear you. you. You should. What I suggest, Anjali, what you should do, you should exit and join again. Maybe sometimes that happens when the network is weak, uh, the voice does not reach. But please try that uh, because other people are able to hear. So you could uh, exit and then join again. Thank you. Thank you. Now, friends, I suggest we do an exercise and I would request you to uh, take it with as much enthusiasm as you can muster in the evening today. We divide ourselves into group. Try hard, try hard to discover in your domain. I mean, domain, because in the group you will have people from chemistry, physics, uh, from instrumentation, from, you know, a whole range of disciplines. So naturally, you would know the journals of your discipline, you know the terms of your discipline, the, the lexicon of your discipline. Try to search quickly some papers, then propose it to the group. Papers where 
there's a link with people's knowledge. It could be a news, it could be a paper, it could be a blog. We will not restrict that today. And you can then, among yourself, vote, okay, we will share these two papers or one paper or three papers, that's up to you, to show where effort was made. Now we are, we, at this stage, we have accepted that the authorship and all those attribution problems were there in most of the literature in the past. And we will not, we may not do it in future, but at least till date, those problems. So we will probably not focus too much attention just now for the purpose of learning, but we will share some insights, which may be in CGCRI, if somebody is there from there in ceramics, uh, we may have discovered from people who make terracotta uh, figurines or uh, people who do uh, forging and casting of traditional alloys for various purposes, uh, for making sculptures, but also other things. So if any one of you uh, finds that a particular solution, you have better solution than what, then you vote among yourself and then decide whichever way you wish but each group could present from different domains. We have seen many examples of plants. So unless there's something very creative, something very interesting, we may play less importance on the plant just now, but I don't mind if you bring that also. But let us try uh, to discover evidence of blending, evidence of blending anywhere in the world. But if it is there in your domain, that would be better because then you can explain to us the significance of that blending. Why that blending is important in contemporary context for dealing with some of the current challenges. So it will be very nice if you could uh, tell us those examples. Anybody, any doubt about what I'm saying? Any, is it understood? Is the assignment is understood? Before we divide, uh, everybody is clear about what we're trying to do? Hello? I will show you one example which you can see that sometimes examples of this kind can also be brought in. This is a paper, James Hornell, Director of Fisheries, almost more than 100 years ago wrote about the design of the boats in Madras presidency. 1920, it was published, but the uh, republished by the South Indian Federation of Fishermen Societies. And it was 1909, so more than 100 years ago, that he did the documentation and has explained. And some of those designs have continued even today. So surely, they were time-tested design, but he he spent a lot of time uh, 100 years ago in documenting designs and their importance for different kinds of turbulence in water and therefore, and the load carrying capacity of these boats up to 200 ton, so on and so forth. So naturally, uh, there are architects, marine people, uh, people, nation, NIO, Nations of Oceanography might have some interest in this kind. So look for whatever kind of, so uh, the, as I just showed you an example, Rishu, the purpose is in your domain or domain of some of you, I mean, in the group that you will divide, you will have people of different domains. So you search in your domain first, the papers, put a slide of these papers that you find where people's knowledge, I'm not only using the word traditional knowledge, it could be people's knowledge, contemporary knowledge, it could be traditional knowledge, doesn't matter, has been blended with modern science, either for validation or value addition. So you know that uh, aspirin was extracted from certain plants and then it was synthesized and made very cost effective and with no burden on environment. So that's fine, that's fine. You know, willow is used, willow plant in North in Kashmir and other parts of the Himalayan region. So many compounds extracted from natural sources, 
based on people's knowledge are, are of everyday use today. We all know that. So look for some extraordinary examples from any discipline of science, which you can explain to us and help us understand. So we'll have 15 minute break and uh, uh, is that clear now? Uh, everybody is clear about the challenge? We will break now. But give groups? One group, uh, 10 groups. Uh, anybody, or maybe 15 groups, maybe? Is that better? 10, ten groups, okay. We have 300, so uh, 250. So 10 will mean about 240. So we will have uh, 24, okay. My suggestion is each one of you can search a paper, then you can discuss and come to a conclusion. Uh, my request will be that all the papers that you search where blending has been done, share them with us. So mail, mail to the group and also to us. Don't, uh, I mean, we, do, we do imagine now we would have at least maybe 100 papers going to come out in the next 15 minutes. Even if each group discovers 10, we will have 100 papers on different kinds of blending between modern and traditional knowledge. But you can share only three best or two or even one, that's up to you. Which one you talk about is up to you. It can be a blog or it can, yeah, yeah. It can be a blog, it can be a news. Yes. And I will, uh, we will also share. It. Is that clear? Shall we proceed? All right, divide please. So I'm joining room number seven. Uh, you all are in group number nine, so you can start discussing.
if anyone is coming up if anyone is coming up with anything uh, just put it in, in the chat yeah, i i am actually searching for drug discovery uh, we have to actually find out the paper with the uh, candidates drug discovery right anything hello yeah we have to find some published work where the relation would have shown between the traditional knowledge and some uh, further research done on that okay we have to share the link or the the pdf anything okay so how we are going to do this yes, so who is making the presentation no one is speaking please speak up did you got anything hello hello uh, yeah, yeah hello sakshya um i have found out a paper where they have used uh, a sativian bitter honey in the treatment of cancer i don't know whether it will uh, completely fit into the topic that sir was uh, telling us to do i think we should search uh, one by one whatever paper we are getting Because I don't think anyone is making any presentation. So in that case, we we may um we can just uh, tell the overview of whatever paper we have collected. Hello. Main points, whatever it comes out with that paper. Hello. Yeah. Is that okay? Hello. is there anyone making the presentation uh, i think last time what we did like that we can do right no need of presentation i am not sure but uh, we can tell what we have seen uh, we have found in that paper overall idea of that paper and we can share the link i think yeah we can do that way yeah actually everyone is sharing just the uh, uh, Paper was getting closed, I think. Yeah. So what we are going to do? Maybe we we'll just tell the main point of uh, whatever that paper is about. Room one has not been closed. What's the problem? Have we? Room room one. Open all rooms. क्या हुआ? नहीं open नहीं करना. क्या करना है? आप देख लो. So friends, welcome back. And uh, I've just kept. Uh... Oh, ठीक है. How do we? Am I my screen is visible? No. Yes, sir. It is vis. It's visible. Visible. Okay. Visible, sir. So yes, sir, I was just visible. trying to show you this picture where uh, today's today's uh, mirror had a this photograph, which is about a very old traditional knowledge. We have heard it for last maybe thirty forty years. Yeah. It existed before that. The height at which lab wings give their lay their eggs. is an indication of how good the monsoon will be so if they give it on the they lay on the ground then the chances are that the monsoon would not be very heavy and if uh, it is on a higher height then the chances are that monsoon will be heavy because they estimate the likely intensity of monsoon while laying their eggs so this is an indicator eco indicator and now i had just to remove it if you want to show it i can show it again so this was the slide that i was showing and uh, uh this is a news that came today in the paper that is monsoon likely to be lower than normal in this part of the country because of the behavior of lab winds 
So there are a lot of ecological indicators which are used, and this is just one example I thought I'd share. Now we will hear from you. Uh, so who would like to begin? Anybody from group one? And even more than one person can share. Pick up any paper and just tell us. If you want to share it, you can share it. All sharing is allowed to all? So please start. Yeah, Rocky, start. Rocky, please start. Rocky Raj, your hand is up, so I thought you will start. Anybody else wants to start? Sachin, you want to mention what this paper is about? Yes, sir, I would like to give yeah, a go ahead. Go ahead, please. In this paper, uh, there is uh, uh, oil of Brahmi oil, Brahmi, which means Bacopa monary. So louder, oil, can you be louder a little bit? Yes, yeah, sir. Brahmi oil. Can you ah, hear me? Yes, now. Yeah, yeah good. Uh, Brahmi oil was applied on, by Shiro, Shirovasti, which means that oil was, was, was retained on the forehead, uh, forehead or head for 20 minutes for 14 days. And uh, after uh, in uh, in patients of uh, cerebral ataxia can you hear me sir yes so cerebral ataxia is a neurodegenerative disease in which uh, cns is degenerated over the time so they applied this oil for 20 minutes for 14 days and after uh, 14 days they found that a patient was able to speak uh, previously which was not able to do, do that at least two words simultaneously and he was uh, he had better memory he was, he was able to recall things. So that was the major outcome of this paper. And Brahmi oil, uh, since it is lipoid in nature, our brain is also lipoid. So that oil is used for uh, uh, as a carrier for Brahmi phyt phytochemicals. So that very was- the interesting, Very interesting, Sachin. Very, very, very interesting because my wife suffered from this problem for long. So it's a very interesting, very interesting Brahmi. It also is given through, mixed with the fat, uh, through nasal root and is applied on uh, nose and uh, forehead and so on. But it's very interesting. Next, please. Next. Uh, Rishu or Gayatri, anybody can start. Let us use the time. Sir, hello. Ha, hello, Rishu. can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sir, I just found this uh, interesting thing where the traditional knowledge has been used in uh, dealing with the pollution data. Mm -hmm. Like for in, I, I belong to the, I work in the pollution science, air pollution uh -huh. science. Mm -hmm. So in this, there's a community, uh, there was research in Australia where in, instead of the four seasons that we used uh, to describe the pollution data and the va variances among the, these seasons, Instead of that, they use the indige indigenously known six or seven season cycles. So when they use that cycle, six, seven season cycle, they were better able to understand the data and the data for, fell into place. So seasonality was very well visible in that six, seven season cycle instead of the four season cycle. Very interesting. Was, yes, sir, this is very think, interesting. Rishu, do you think that given your interest in pollution research, you would like to do a comparative analysis in India? Yes, sir, we can do. So, yes. you know, because something concrete should come out of every class now. So if, let us say, a few of you find something exciting and relevant to your domain, and you think that without digressing from your main focus in your career, you can do something meaningful, which will increase our understanding of the phenomena and also at the same time increase the respect for people's knowledge for fact. So Rishi, yes. Rishi if you can take that, that will be very nice. Yes. Next, please. And Mary or Hidaya, anybody please, just go ahead. Uh, hello, sir, this is Anne Mary. Yeah. Uh, sir, actually I'm from group two. Uh, can I continue? Continue, continue. Okay, sir. So this is uh, not an article. This is a uh, news report. So based on a uh, title like "Plant a Bond." 
so uh, in india we know that uh, osteoporosis is a particular medical condition with the bones become brittle and fragile and loss of uh, tissue so in india most, more than 50 million people like men and women both are uh, affected by this so mostly they were treated with the human parathyroid hormone which is quite expensive so it's a particular study which is done by cdri so they uh, extracted a compound like uh, dalbergi phenol from the uh, shesham that is dalbergi sisu so that's a timber tree so uh, they could make uh, extract this particular compound and it is actually mimicking and it is uh, giving nutrition and it is uh, used as a uh, treatment for this particular uh, disease so uh, they found this particular uh, extract from such a, uh, another plant like himalayan elm that is uh, almus uh, valicinia so they are uh, telling uh, claiming that uh, not claiming so they found that uh, it is a potential to treat the bone loss and it can increase the bone mineral density in uh, women after menopause so not only this particular only single plant uh, some other plants like uh, ashwagandha uh, asti samhariga google all those plants are prescribed to treat osteoporosis uh, in ayurveda so uh, they are continuing to do the studies in uh, these particular plants also wonderful thank you so much thank you since i am working in mm-hmm. bone implants so i am pretty much interested in particular in this very nice that would be good if you your implants could be impregnated with some of these compounds it might make it easier for the implants to be accepted by the body isn't it yes sir yes sir it's very so easy might... suddenly if i gone through it came across to me so even i also found it very interesting very good here they are please here they are please uh good evening sir uh, i come from food technology background and i'm from csir safety area right? So the paper that I have uh, put now is uh, regarding jamun seed and fruit extract for uh, uh, reducing diabetes mellitus. Yeah. There are a clean number of papers well. regarding yes. uh, jamun and uh, diabetes mellitus, and Correct. it has been it has been there in our uh, traditional medicine also. So many fruits. I mean, there are a clean number of fruits and leaves. Are, so many things have been used. the same thing now we are using as uh, they say dye food is dye medicine so in our domain we are trying to incorporate those biomedical uh, properties of those plants into food so that everybody can take it instead right. as in medicine right. so food is one more that everybody can enjoy now so many uh, so many foods are also coming up like functional foods wherever yes. you go to yes. supermarkets you will find so many things so <laughs> it's a very big domain so we oh. can work on so many things sir very nice pinky nitin uh, pinky can start first please raise your hand that will be easier yes pinky hello sir good evening good evening yeah sir i just uh, my background is botany but uh, right now actually i'm pursuing my phd in biophotovoltaics but uh, recently i come across this interesting article uh so it's about vitania somnifera which is known as uh, ashwagandha yeah. so uh, the research article is as old as uh, in 1996 it was in, published in 1996 and uh, it is about the anti cancer properties of the vitania somnifera and the article has shown that you know it has great uh, anti tumor and radio sensit- uh, radio sensitizing properties and it has shown very promising results and after that you know the research has been continued and recently also uh, the paper uh, research article in to 2021 it has shown that you know it has uh, great potential uh, for anti cancer uh, drug medicine you know all of that so i found it interesting i uh, i have not been able to explore it properly but uh, this is something this uh, seemed very could, promising you couldn't find anything on photovoltaic property of the plant no no sir i know i uh, yes sir the photovoltaic is completely based on uh, the pr- photosynthetic uh, photosynthetic principle that so, i can discuss about so, but no 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 what i'm saying is have people have you found any paper where they have looked at the photovoltaic property of the plants people have yeah yes yeah, sir definitely definitely sir the research has been uh, even the 
initiation of this research was done by a botanist he started it, it with bacteria but eventually you know they came to the plants and uh, now they are exploring it in, in every kind of you know in photosynthetic plants as well as well as uh, cyanobacteria as well as uh, many other algae so they are exploring the properties of all these uh, microorganisms and plants okay thank you yeah then Sir, I can share the screen. Yeah, go ahead. Um, this is more about uh, the improved cook stoves. I think, sir, will be knowing this I, since we all travel like now across the country and yeah, see yeah, the yeah. innovations. Uh, just to give a hint, uh, most of the cooking still in the rural part of the India is done on wood. Uh, there are a couple of reasons. I think we'll not go into that. But how the evolution of cook stoves have taken, and being from engineering background, we can understand this. Uh, it was, and it's all about the artistic skill or the masonry skills of the local, uh, uh, the mason, like you now who builds the cook stoves. But with uh, renewed interest from the uh, some engineers or technologists from Premier Institute, uh, they have started utilizing the energy which was lost uh, okay. after the uh, few flue gas has been taken out. So. Only first, there were no chimneys or something. Entire house used to get black, and there were problems of indoor air pollutions and impact on the health of the family members, especially women and children. Those used to stay at home for most of the time uh, in uh, back then. So then there was a development of this from Terry also did one cook stoves. Then IIT Bombay, IIT Delhi, then the Ruler Technology Action Groups of Premier IITs, and then they started understanding. But very interesting thing, what I observed in the ruler communities were, uh, they have their own ways of making stoves efficient. Rather than having just a flat bottom, they will just raise the uh, earthen pot so that the air will go in through that. Because whenever we want a fire, we require three things. One is fuel, one is oxygen, one is ignition system. So they just added one small stone on top of it. So air used to grow. So there will be efficient combustion. So that one problem was solved locally. The second was more important was how to use the heat that is going away in form of smoke or flue gas. So I have seen couple of things in Himachal or Ladakh also. Brief, they are brief, making brief, a, brief. And make it please brief, please brief. Yeah, they are making like a small water tank and attached to the pipe. So water also get heated. So these are a couple of things they are using on this uh, nice. improved cook stove design. Now, only question is that can we design something by which millions of people in our country can fabricate more efficient cooking stoves? Today, the combustion efficiency is hardly 15 to 20 percent. So if you yes. can improve it 40 percent, 50 percent, that will save so much of fuel. Shrimai, yes, please. Shrimai, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, ah. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Okay. Good evening, sir. I'm Srimu Chakraborty. I'm from uh, CSR IICB, Indian Institute of Chemical Biology. Sir, I'm mainly from chemistry background, but at present I'm doing my PhD in biology field. Uh, so, sir, I just, um, while finding different papers, this one which I found very interesting was it's a review work, um, a review article uh, in which the, they are speaking of various species of conifers uh, mm -hmm. in Iran. And they have mentioned here that the different species have got different medicinal uses. Uh, like one of the species, it has got anti-inflammatory, anti-allergic, and uh, anti-pyretic -py activities. Uh, thereafter, they also had explained uh, a few other species which have medicinal values like uh, anti-diabetic activity, then anti-tumor activities. So it's a very uh, big uh, review, so I could not read it in detail, but uh, overall view what I found was that uh, with the coniferous plants, the various species of coniferous plants and various parts of it, it has got various medicinal uses, which I found very interesting. Uh, like in neurological activity also, uh, various parts has been used, then insect uh, insecticidal activity. Uh, uh, in fact, in bronchial effect also, they have shown in the review a uh, few uh, examples of its medicinal activity. So this was all about it. Sir. Does your thesis deal with any of those aspects? No. No, no, sir. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. All right. But try, try later on when you have better time, look for if there's any linkage that you can build. Anjali? 
good evening sir i am anjali from csir yeah. niist uh, sir i am working on metal organic materials for functional applications so uh, i am currently working on super hydrophobic materials and we have seen super hydrophobic materials are uh, emerging phase uh, uh, synthetically available materials but i have found a paper very interesting that people uh, the, the a paper appeared in uh, acs applied nano materials in 2019 they have used a leaf mesh of tectona grandis oh. a dried leaf mesh of tectona grandis and um, and modified it with it with nano composite of sil- uh, nano silica and uh, polyester and made it for uh, 95% uh, efficiency in oil water separation and they have achieved a water contact angle of 165 degrees i will show the picture of yeah yeah that's amazing isn't it how nice beautiful so this is the leaf mesh ah uh. and also another one more picture is there uh, and you have put it on the chat uh, no sir i am i have shared on shared it can you can you see that yes 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 you can see that this is the tectona grandis leaf mesh and they have made it uh, modified with nano composite of silica and polyester and uh, made it available for 95% efficiency of oil water separation and even 18 separation cycles they have tried it so, oh my god so mesh continues to be separating for 18 yes. cycles very yes. good this is a great great uh, paper and i think it has a lot of implication for our pollution in the oceans isn't it yes so, yes or in other bodies very nice please Thank put you, it sir. on the chat also this paper very interesting yes devendra yes. uh good evening sir good evening very Uh, I'm Devan Singh Parikh. I'm working in the field of uh, signal processing and machine intelligence in the, yeah. in uh, life monitoring. So as I uh, shared, one of the news which uh, means came in uh, one years back. Like initially, as as we know in in my field, uh, the traditional method that is uh, uh, B heaps, which was used, which was uh, initially used for uh, mitigation of crop raiding by the elephants. now uh, the indian railway they are using a b budge which is uh, producing the artificial uh, uh, b sound while uh, train is moving towards the uh, forest area elephant corridors so, yes yes so so because of this when elephant uh, hear these sounds they means uh, diverted from their uh, way and even they uh, uh, automatically they Uh, push themselves away from the railway track so this method can be further used for the early as an early warning uh, system for the mitigation of elephant death in a railway track very interesting very interesting and yes. uh, this must have this is a classical tradition all the countries have known yes. this yes yes, yes. so blend very, of the traditional and the modern modern yes. very nice very yes, good sir. example devendra very good example and this Thank is exactly you. what signal processing is about so you have yes. found a natural signal yes. yes they have imitated and very nice very good example next please next please who would like to be next there are so many on the chat ha raksha please go ahead raksha go ahead abhi yeah go ahead yes hmm. Uh, this is a paper regarding please little little louder okay. this is a paper regarding an ancient herb uh, which was consumed earlier by rishimuni for its uh, multiple traditional benefits uh, sauceria lapa which is also called as uh, indian costage uh, which is uh, traditionally consumed in kashmir so the properties i mean the traditional benefits of it has now been elaborated uh, and tested for its anti cancer anti oxidant and hepatocellular and protective uh, uh, benefits uh, the root extract of this plant has been uh, tested on uh, uh, liver cells and uh, it has been found to have uh, protection against uh, uh, liver damage and liver cirrhosis and it has been also elaborated for its uh, uh, anti oxidant properties and the first report of it is from this paper 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Next one. Hello, sir. Yeah, go ahead, Sanjeev. Sir, uh, I'm Sanjeev from CSN East. And uh, I'm actually, I'm doing research in the field of uh, drug delivery in diabetes. So I'm especially interested to develop a uh, herbal formulation, which can we deliver in a uh, uh, glucose responsive way. So one thing I would like to state here that we, in our, in Assam, one, uh, one uh, plant is uh, available and it is widespread actually. So uh, the plant name is Tinospora California. So this plant extract has uh, numerous uh, efficacies uh, against uh, different diseases. So in, uh, in Assam, this plant is locally known as uh, Sagodi Lota. That means it has hundreds of virtue. It has hundred types of benefits uh, in different types of diseases. So uh, as I'm doing research in the field of diabetes, so we can, uh, we can uh, go ahead uh, with the it's it's beneficial effect to lower uh, glucose yeah it is also used uh, in the viral disease control yes, and exactly, it is exactly, exactly. Yes, Gila, Gila, yeah yes, very nice thank you next please next hello sir yes gayatri uh, i'm gayatri from csri city uh, I'm about to explain the same plant, Tinospora cordifolia. Actually, my father is a diabetic who takes this uh, leaves every day to maintain the sugar level. Mm. And it is, uh, I'm observing him from last one year. So uh, it is almost like uh, it's not increasing. The levels of glucose are not increasing. Uh, this is an example which I have seen with my eyes. So wow. I would, uh, yeah. If possible, I'm planning to start a research on this in diabetes, uh, like targeted drug delivery in diabetes. Hopefully, it will go on to the track once I finish with my PhD. Very nice. Very yeah, nice. Apart from this, in our area, we will use this for uh, liver diseases and also for snake bites. Mm. So, they will ingest the leaves uh, with, uh, on empty stomach daily. So that it will have a hepatoprotective uh, effect. Okay, very nice, very nice. Next, please. Hello, sir. Uh, yeah. This is Vikas from CSIR NCL. So mm. uh, I want to share one article I found. Uh, uh, this also first time. Uh, this I saw uh, in one of my boss presentation. So in around 1770s, uh, the Galvani was interested uh, in some animal uh, uh, electricity flow in an animal and he observed uh, uh, electricity flow in a frog and uh, uh, Volta saw this and he rejected this theory and he further investigated investigated this and come up with this electrostatic energy storage and from there uh, the battery field comes so i find this interesting example another article i found in which uh, uh, the uh, it was already in traditional knowledge review uh, some journal related to traditional knowledge i can share the link of that also uh, so in these paper, uh, in this in this uh, article, they are actually uh, interested in making future energy policy by uh, properly incorporating the uh, local tribes uh, because there are a lot of energy projects which are making to flee the people leaving that area. Uh, similar example they have quoted in Guyana. And uh, so what they are describing that the uh, regional people better understand the uh, flow of uh, winds, they better understand the uh, local uh, solar uh, effect in the that particular reason. And also they quoted an example from Barefoot College in Rajasthan, which is teaching the local population about the solar uh, uh panel in, in installation and how to utilize solar electricity and they they are also doing similar kind of work in Sahara, uh, africa as well as in afghanistan 
so they are training those people because rajasthan is a more so uh, better equipped to have solar plants so uh, in this way they are formulating the future energy uh, sustainable energy storage uh, specifically for renewable energy so i am also working in uh, energy storage so i thought to bring it very in. interesting both examples are very good uh, prachi she darshini and then amandeep i would like you also to share about your work later prachi Uh, hello good evening sir am yeah. i audible yes you are uh, yes sir uh, sir i am prachi from uh, csio chandigarh uh, i would like to uh, share a recent uh, news article that i came across and that is about a technique named swastik that has been developed by uh, this um, csir lab and uh, ncl pune okay what is it actually uh, so this technique is basically for disinfection economical disinfection of water and it integrates with the traditional knowledge of ayurveda uh, it is basically uh, involves it basically involves technique of uh, boiling liquid which is base uh, which is due to the result of pressure reduction and then the with the use of natural oils the antimicrobial properties uh, of these oils are used for the disinfection of water in this they have a combination of chemistry biology and chemical engineering and uh, they have uh, basically uh, the researchers have achieved complete eliminations of uh, gra gram negative e coli gram positive uh, 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 oros bacteria and the and some other antibiotic resistance or uh, re uh, resistant uh, species have also been removed by using these oils so uh, here uh, this technique is basically a blend of traditional knowledge of ayurveda and the uh, technology very good example very good example very good example thank you pradarshini Uh, hello sir yes. am i audible yes you are uh, i am priya darshni i am from csir nest trivandrum so okay. i am i am from the field of chemistry sir and this paper i read now found uh, where they have used the traditional medicine uh, uh, like they have used it, they have found that it is a there is a bioactive molecule there and then they have used it to modify used organic chemistry to modify it and to to better efficiently fight the disease so this is one of the examples where we can use the traditional knowledge and then use our expertise in creating a better molecule to fight against the known diseases and this is prevalent especially in india because we have a lot of ayurveda knowledge and where we have a lot of rasayana kashayam where we use these kind of mixtures of compounds you know from bioactive yeah, plants yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. we can use things like that to improve our expertise i am also working on some kind of similar problem for my phd where i am isolating molecules from natural products and then enhancing them to fight against diabetes hypertension and things like that sir good are you trying to use the knowledge of the communities also or only publish yes. Uh, yes sir we have uh, we have established some few uh, links with people who are uh, traditionally in ayurveda doctors and those who are traditionally in you know the tribal people who have more knowledge about the plants make, make so we them, can make them your partner make them your partner yes sir yes yeah, sir yes good next please very nice next please amandeep would you like to be next yes sir sir amandeep Yeah. Sir, uh, uh, I have found this article. It is about uh, vibration and uh, noise mitigation. And in this, uh, they use the sandwich uh, structures. They have first hard structure and then soft structure and then again a hard structure. So for the soft structure, they are using uh, cotton, and for the hard structure, they are using bamboo uh, and uh, rosal and pine. So. they have uh, done experimental study to find its mechanical properties like elastic modulus and uh, uh, other properties like the uh, wave number to find its noise and vibration uh, mitigation properties and they have concluded that uh, the uh, use of uh, low shear modulus material like the cotton can be uh, efficiently used for the application very interesting very interesting because a composite of bamboo and cotton 
would be something I have never seen before. So it is very interesting. Next, please. Who would like to be next, please? Anyone? Yes, Deepak. Somebody's uh, system is not as creating voice noise. Please check whose mic is on. Yeah, Deepak, please go ahead. Hello, sir. I am from CSIR NPL. Uh, I want to share a paper on behalf of my group number three. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. This is the paper, Development of Fuel Efficient Cook Stove. In this, there is a there bottom-up approach used to implement, de implement to develop a fuel efficient cook stove. In this, there is a re reduction of firewood consumption by around 21%, reduced soot accumulation, by around 38% and time of cooking preparation by around 18.5%. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. To my to Bombay. Yeah. This is used for two port stove and three port stove. This is the general design that is used in the less around India. This is the lady who, which is which is testing the water boiling test in the village were carried out by this woman this woman where fired her cook stove to find out its performance. This is the design of a twisted mild steel steel plate that is put on on this yeah, we had given uh, Jati award to this student very nice yes it change it will flow, it makes the uh, heat flow into the vessel rather than diffuse very interesting this twisted tape hanging in the hard holes twisted tape in the hard holes by using steel rods very interesting and uh, this is the uh, experimental setup carried out to port uh, water boiling test in the laboratory uh, thermocouples are used to measure the temperature of water and and the temperature of the flame, both ports yeah. and hearths. And Very this nice. is the old de design. This was the twisted tape pack packs that can be retrofitted in the traditional cook stove. Very interesting. 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 Very very nice. Also, Thank you. that uh, they divided the percentage of uh, heat input to, to cook stove. That is twenty five point eight one percent only heat transferred to the port. Uh, uh, exit losses are twenty four point nine eight percent and combustion losses are thirty five point nine two percent. So they improve point. the combustion efficiency and reduce the uh, exit losses. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deepak. Uh, Ashish. Hello. Sir, am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, so, uh, sir, um, uh, uh, I have gone through uh, sir, uh, pre uh, previous literature and I found a paper that is published in uh, traditional uh, uh, that is published in uh, on uh, Asian Pacific Journal of Tropical Biomedicine, in which uh, they have talked about uh, helic uh, helicotorus uh, isora. So remove your uh, screen sharing, please. Yeah, go ahead. The so, go ahead, uh, so, so in this review, uh, uh, they talk about. Uh, 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 they have collected uh, various literature, various papers, uh, and uh, they uh, they. Uh, from uh, the different search that described that uh, this plant uh, uh, that is H. Isora uh, uh, have, uh, has uh, some uh, properties like uh, antioxidant property, antibacterial, anti uh, 
peroxidative property, anti-cancer activity, and uh, anti-diarrheal activity. So in Hindi, uh, we used to call it as Marodvali. And even in uh, our traditional knowledge also, uh, we have used it for uh, to relieve stomach pain, uh, worm infection in children, and uh, even for indigestion and uh, treating diarrhea and vomiting. So uh, the so there may uh, so uh, some some systemic study can be planned uh, to further uh, confirm these findings. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Thank you, uh, Ashish. And next, please. Who would like to be next? Y yes, uh, Tahira. Yeah, Tahira, go ahead. Kaira, please go ahead. Kaira, are you able to hear me? Kaira, go ahead. Start your. Kaira, I we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Uh, maybe you can put on the chat and I'll read out. Kaira, can you put down on the chat? I can read out, but we can't hear you. You have to switch off. You have to switch on your unmute yourself. Let me unmute yourself. Megha, can you unmute Tahira? Megha, can you unmute? Yes, go ahead, Tahira. Speak up. No, we can't hear you. There's a problem in your mic. Uh, can you type, please? Or make a slide and you can show it. Tahira, please chat, chat. Put on the chat. We can't hear you. And uh, next one, please, by the time she puts it. Next one, please. Who would like to be next? So myself, Preeti. Yeah. Uh, I am from sir, uh, CSI and uh, um, As we know, TKDL play an important role in the waste management from mm -hmm. the ancient time. And this method of approach still is going in village. Still, there is a uh, segregation method they use to recycle uh, organic waste and uh, organic waste, 100%, and back to the soil. But this is not happening in the urban areas. Earlier, uh, if we see uh, ancient time, uh, so that food waste, uh, agriculture waste, uh, uh, cloth, all can be recycled. They're more focused on the reuse, recycle, and minimum disposal. So uh, my work in that area, how to, minimize the waste in urban and maximize the organic waste recycling or uh, recycling okay hmm. very nice so you are trying to find uh, the policy yeah policy and the what are the technology that can support because everyone is saying about uh, door to door is uh, suitable door to door collection is very much important for segregation but segregation never help uh, never help until unless then there is not separate collection system is exist and in the village system there is a separate collection system is exist that's why they can able to uh, recycle the organic waste correct 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 that's a very interesting observation very nice thank you hmm. Taira has mentioned that there is a plant called as costus igneous which has been widely used for controlling the diabetes people have been using two to three leaves daily thank you Taira. this is a useful insight maybe somebody has done research on it we will have to find out uh nettle leaf and others are also used next please next next please anything from material science or other physical sciences or uh, minerals or the uh, metals of clay ceramics Yes, sir. I am Sagar from uh, ah. CS, CSIO Chandigarh. Uh, I am from group four and we discussed about uh, some of the water purification traditional techniques. As we know that right now, RO systems are being used, which are a bit uh, acidic in their nature. The water, the output is a bit acidic and also it removes the essential minerals from it. So there is a traditional way of uh, purifying the water at home, uh, which uses different types of clothes. Uh, it may be a coarse media filters. 
uh, for gravel filters like pebbles coconut fiber filters are being used for filtering the water and some roots are also used roots of some plants are used and they can even uh, remove the uh, water contaminations like fluoride from water so this That's was nice. a, a sort of a clay jar arrangement uh, where layers of roots are being used to stage three stage filtration is done in clay vessels very nice agar that's very interesting very affordable kaushal has mentioned very interesting point with about how the traditional musical instrument like tanpura was uh, blended with electronic amplification and system and by raj narayan in 1979 which has brought a new experience in music so that's a very interesting example of blending thank you uh, anybody else who is next please yashri dhwani sakshi memuna manish vijay any group which has not yet shared please go ahead and if you can't speak for some reason then let me know and i will share on climate some of you have mentioned uh, anybody would like to talk about it how climate perception and adjustment to climate change traditional knowledge has been found to be very useful many large international efforts are going on in tapping the traditional knowledge about wind about weather about temperature anybody would like to comment on that that's welcome any group which has not shared their insight anything unusual olive seeds for olive seeds olive or olive vera is it olive alim or olive seeds okay in unani very nice priority yes uh alim okay anybody else please yes deepak you wanted to add something yes sir uh quickly briefly briefly yeah this is low tech air conditioner use terracotta tube and yes very nice water to naturally cool down air this is the design in which water is flowing from up to down and uh, air is flowing from one side to a, another side and uh, the room is cooled down yes very nice very nice very useful and These we have seen this yes 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 and the studio this yeah this is the cheaper alternative before. correct and correct. Uh, very efficient yes it cool down around 6 to 10 degrees fine yes. yes 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 very very effective use of traditional knowledge very good example uh, thank you deepak anybody else please thank you sir Yes, Rupa Brata, you were talking about honeybees. You can mention about their role in climate monitoring. Rupa Brata, you you can speak up, or I should read it out. So what she has mentioned is that honeybees are exceptional markers for climate change. So they are carried out on their movement, mortality, and behavior. Yes, of course, in some cases they have been very high degree of mortality. In Karnataka, for example, there was a huge loss of tradition of indigenous. uh honey bees uh, anybody else please yes uh the yeah that is well known no jetrofa for by feel yes any anybody else any unusual insight about blending uh anybody else before i want to yes Uh, dragonfly as a natural indicator of rainfall very interesting one can test it out one can check their behavior that's very interesting of uh, aluminum foil and hemisphere container working as a concentrator to dry coffee beans that seems a very good blend uh, very nice uh shreyas comment on adaptogens very important changing conditions we all need them yes 
Yes, yes. Now let's come to the point uh, about why the scientific system in our country has not given up, given enough attention to blending the knowledge system. So if you remember, I had given you example from Anantanag where we had seen a house using uh, jute, fiber, clay, straw of rice uh, for making a wall or house which you would not allow organic matter to deposit and create black patches through fungal uh, spores. So in architecture, we need uh, we need the, we have had uh, traditional knowledge. We have used people's knowledge. Now, please remember blending is not only with traditional knowledge. Blending can also be done with contemporary knowledge in water conservation, in cooling systems, in cleaning water, as some of you have mentioned. A very good example of NCL was given by people as to how they use some of the Ayurvedic medicines. Yes, who's, who's sharing this? Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Who's sharing? Any maggots for treating wound to enhance healing and reduce infection. That's very interesting. Maggots are a source of problem. But here is a saying of Prophet Muhammad about 1400 years ago. If a housefly falls in the drink of anyone, he should dip it in. But one of its being has a disease, the other has a cure for the disease. That's very interesting. Maggot therapy. So that's a very interesting. I've never heard of it before. But uh, Lucilla City is feeding on liver and producing copious amount of extra oral secretion, which can be collected for testing. Uh, very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I can't see the name, but it was very interesting. Anybody else wants to share? So what are the institutional changes that we need to bring about to build these linkages? Now, caterpillar that eats plastic, oh my God, that would be wonderful, isn't it? Everybody needs that, Pooja. Would you like to mention a word about it? Pooja? Are you able to unmute yourself? Doesn't matter if you're not, but it is very interesting what you have mentioned. Uh, uh, found a caterpillar that eats plastic. Okay, so there's a very interesting paper she has mentioned in the chat. And uh, of course, all of us will find that relevant because this is a, such a serious problem today. So good friends, before we wind up today, I would like to ask two or three questions. First question is, what institutional, what changes should be brought about in institutional conditions, let's say of CSIR labs, which will encourage more exploration of this blending process. What do you think we need to do? Anybody, any suggestion, any observation? What empowerment do you need to walk on this path? Jayashri, Dhani, Deepa, Divya. Yes, Ayesha, that's a good point. Excursion, so we do show the atras, maybe we should come we should have a show the other with all of you or in groups because large size will be too much, but maybe with in a group of 50 or 70, we think of that. That's not a bad idea. High end collaboration. Uh, yeah, go ahead. We, it would be better if we have a more of a like a connection with pharmaceutical companies or drug companies that will help us like in finding out what is actually needed in the real like scenario instead of just focusing on so that we can use the traditional knowledge as well as the realistic approach towards finding better drugs or towards finding better solutions to treat our diseases. Okay, okay. Uh, Varsha has mentioned about using rice husk as a super plasticizer and blended with fly ash for producing geopolymeric material for construction, which is very interesting. Now we know that rice straw husk has been used in various construction activities, but the property that you have mentioned is very interesting. So I think 
we need to evaluate the reason why some of the structures have stood the weather for 2000 years stupas buddhist stupas still stand today what kind of binding material they used what kind of clays they used our modern structures can't withstand the weather for more than 25 30 40 years the parliament building in 70 years is being demolished or maybe is being replaced so also for many other buildings but the some of the ancient structures have withstood thousands of years and have been staying there so obviously there's something that we need to know about materials that were used at that time how could they be how could they have such a low entropy that they could last so long and mind you that many of the bricks as i mentioned earlier in used in traditional structures were also reusable which is not the case with modern concrete so there is a huge amount of landfill and landfill is nothing but choking the drainage channels of the earth so it's like lungs of the earth are being choked naturally the system will die so one suggestion you are making is that we should have excursion we should have show the atras maybe that's a very good idea second you are saying that if the unmet needs of the society are pointed out you orient your research to address those needs and use the people's knowledge what else should we do nitin you had any suggestion any lack of yeah that's another good idea that we should also study history better i showed you that book of boats design of 1902 which fisheries federation has republished it the asiatic society library in calcutta which i have visited many times has some wonderful collection of old manuscripts and also the asiatic society library in mumbai so there would be interest um, I, I, by, but, but i would talk about contemporary knowledge of people because that's how people are surviving and there so it could also be innovations that people use which can blend knowledge will blend your science so don't think that we should only blend modern science in the traditional knowledge we can also uh, that's very nice we should make a database that will encourage people to get interested and uh, one database that already exist i told you 100, 100 yes 131000 uh, bits of knowledge which you and i have shared on this website which are which is uh, published knowledge on which they would not work but that is very useful and you can use it uh, refer to it uh, that's open access uh, uh, yes that will be very useful also that if the research is pulled together so we have one database as you have seen techpedia.in you can try to build a separate or a similar database of research on specific bits of knowledge and then we can put this database in hindi and other indian languages so that people can also use this database young people can use it and find out how their knowledge has been scrutinized by the scientific system so that will be very useful any suggestion before we close today? Any other idea, a radical idea that you think will increase the blending process? If not, then let me remind you that we are going to work in groups and you are supposed to form the group very soon uh, about the unmet need on which you want to work uh, interdisciplinary manner and try to come out with some reviews and also after reviewing the literature, what could be done to meet that unmet need. So take a persistent problem in your domain and we have to work out a project. So Ashwini, we will have to discuss this sometime to clarify this even more detail and uh, work out a timeline so that they can mention, they can share their synopsis of which unmet need they are going to take and if we need to change it or modify it, we will do that. So one session we'll have to keep only on uh, the synopsis of your projects that you will do on specific unmet need, which hopefully with blending or otherwise will be met through your effort. Uh, yes, you can form groups on your own, Ishani. Uh, Pradipta, that's a good idea. Uh, Ishani, you can, we can, you can all form group of your own 
group of five, as we discussed earlier, or seven, that would be very nice. And uh, But make a list of members quickly and write a short synopsis, and then a pathway of uh, literature that you will review and understand the context of that unmet need and how it needs to be solved in a frugal manner, an affordable manner. So friends, thank you so much. We'll meet again uh, next week. Uh, our class, let me look at the book. That is the timetable. Next is on 25th. 25th, yes, 25th. And 25th, the topic is uh, the role, what role does open innovation play in reinforcing experimental and innovative ethic and trigger a collaborative culture of problem solving? Open innovation is a very powerful concept of uh, sharing knowledge both ways, inward and outward. We will discuss that. And I would like you to reflect on that as to how do we promote, I mean, open innovation is in contrast to reciprocal open innovation is in contrast to the IP protected knowledge. So while some authors include even licensing as their open part of open, but I treat open innovation as the one where sharing is uninhibited, both ways sharing, but it has to be respectful and reciprocal and responsible because then uh, all the tensions that we see between the two systems of knowledge when they take knowledge uh, from outside uh, will get manifested. So see you on 24th. Any comment, any questions that you have, please feel free to write. And on your assignments, start thinking about if you need to discuss in smaller groups, we can arrange some time for discussing and elaborating on some of the synopses that are very, very significant, solving some of the very significant. Thank you so much. Uh, Megha, please uh, save the chat. Uh, Megha, can you save the chat? Yes, sir, already saved. Yeah. No, 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 but saved there it. may have been some comments. Just tweet yeah, again. Right now, right now, I'll save yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So we can uh, close the meeting now. <laughs>